Hello, in this video we shall discuss the GC operation on manager heap objects. We know that when the GC arrives on a generational heap region, two things can happen. One, the unreferenced object of that heap region will be collected by garbage collector. Second, the strongly referenced object will be moved to the next higher heap section. So we shall try to prove these two internals using a demo. We will also learn two new WinDBG commands, one is gcware and other one is gcroot. First of all, let's give a attention to this code block. In this code block, two football objects are getting created. One is red and blue and the red bar is being attached to a kid object which is a permanent object. Okay, let's do this demo. I have a demo applications to prove the CLR th theories. So let's open referred objects move to a higher generation. So we have a button here, kid gets football. The button co button event code has this particular code block. So I am applying the button. Red and blue football has been created. So the application heap will have the red and blue football objects. Now we want to see these particular objects in memory. For that, we wanted to connect the application with the debugger. You know, to do that, this is a 32-bit application. So I am opening a 32-bit debugger. I am attaching the debugger. I am attaching the process to a debugger for live debugging. In this dialog box, selecting the our test application. OK. Now, the application has been attached to a debugger. But before debugging a .NET application, the first and foremost thing what we have to do is we have to load a DLL called SOS to this debugger. This is because SOS DLL has all the .NET debugging commands to debug a .NET application. So let's do this first one, loading. SOS has been loaded to the debugger. Now we can do our commands of interest. Now, we know this application currently have two football objects, right? So in order to do anything, we wanted to print all these football objects from memory. We can use a command. What this command means is that it will dump all the foot football objects of type football from the memory. We know that only two objects are there. So two objects created and their address, memory addresses has been printed. So now we also know when new objects are getting created, it will be created on the Gen0 heap. So these two football objects must be in the Gen0, but we can verify that. Copy the address. We can use a command gcware and provide the address. So this command will print the generational heap where this particular object resides. This is in generation 0. We can take the next one, copy this address. Next, second one, gcware command, replace the second one, we will do that. So this, even this object is in the generation 0, so both objects are in the generation 0, fine. Now, we know that one of this one is red football, another one is blue. Red football has been attached with the kid object, right? So let's see that, the attachment. There is a command called gc root, providing a particular object, it will print, this command will print the reference chain of this particular object. So we'll, we'll see the result. See. The reference chain of that object. This particular object is football and it has been referred by kid, right? The kid is a permanent object of form, it has been so this is the reference chain. So our point of interest is this particular football object has been connected to this kid object. So this is the red ball, right? We'll see the other ball also. Take the second one. This must be the blue one. Let's see its reference chain gc root, I am replacing the second one now, gc root found zero unique root and that is correct because blue object we have not attached to anything. So now we have 
shown two things. One is both objects are residing on generation 0. Second, uh, red object is being attached with a kit and blue object doesn't have any references. Now this is the before GC condition. Now consider a garbage collection happened at this point of time on this application. Then what will happen to this object? We will be, it will be interesting so, to see that. So let's try to do that, particular mimic that. First of all, we have to do a go command so that once we do the go command, the control of the application, currently the control of the application is being available to the debugger. Once we do the go command, it will be given to the application. So now debugger has given the control to application. We can do anything on the application. Now, I want to force a GC. Usually forcing a GC in an application is not recommended practice. But for this demo, I have to do it because I have to show a after GC scenario. I don't know when the CLR will invoke a GC. So I am invoking a GC to make uh, for our demo to proceed. So now I did a GC. GC action happened on this application, right? So now we will see the memory. For that, I have to go back to a debugger. Debug, break, so that debugger get control again of this application. Now we can do our dumb heap because I want to print out the football object now. Previously there were two football objects. Now we can see there is only one football object, right? Because the blue football which was not referenced is been deleted by GC. So we have only one particular this one. Uh, this must be the red football. So we have proved the first one. The unreferenced object will be collected by the GC. That is true. Now we have only one object. Now the reference object moved to the higher heap section, right? That we can see that. We knew that this particular object was in generation heap 0. Now let's see where it is. GC where command. I am putting this address now. Now this particular object, football object is in gen 1. Before it was in gen 0. So we understood that after a GC, GC moved the generation 0 object to gen, gen 1. So our second theory has been proved. The strongly referenced object moved to a higher heap section. Right? So this way we have proved our both CLR theorems and we have also learned two new comments. Thank you.